You're locked into the Grizzly Digital Network. It's time for Grizzlies Live. Now, let's go live to the voice of the Grizzlies, Matt Mahoney. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Grizzlies Live here at Nuke Cedar. As always, I'm your host, Matt Mahoney. And for today, my favorite episode of the year, I've drug along a co-host here, our sports information director, Mr. Shoutout himself, and Clay Trainum. Clay, how we doing, bud? Fantastic. How are you? Your return to the show here, man. Appreciate you being on the show. Uh, I know it's a busy summer for you, so uh, today we're going to count down the top 10 accomplishments of the 2014-15 season. You've been with us for a year now. What, have you had a chance to reflect it all a little bit? You know, I, I have it in little bits and pieces, but I just got back off vacation. Now I'm starting to go into the whole logging the events the previous year and yeah. putting them into media guides. So yeah, I'm starting to. Absolutely. I'm not quite there yet, but today will help out a lot with that. Before we get to our top 10, we have a special announcement. And we got a lot of announcements today, actually. But this first one here is near and dear to my heart and a huge supporters out there for you on the Internet that have tuned in all year long. Today's episode of Grizzlies Live, I'm going to probably jinx myself a little bit here, but uh, will push us over the 100,000 hits on the Grizzly Digital Network this year alone. So not our website, just you guys watching the show and the broadcast and the videos. We're going to have 100,000 hits in one year in just year two of the broadcast. Pretty cool stuff. Yeah, I have a theory about that. About what? About going over 100,000. Okay. It may be. It may be, Clay. We ran the numbers on Monday. It looks pretty good. We drug Clay on here, so we're looking for 100K today. So thank you so much to all the viewers out there that have tuned in all year long. Um, but today is about the top 10 accomplishments for Grizzly Athletics. Um, with all due respect to our coaches who are our best interviewees, our student athletes who are my favorite interviewee, uh, favorite people to interview, Clay's always a part of the show. But today it's about highlights, it's about informing, educating, and we may even start a little debating here too as well. That sounds good to me. I'm ready to get it going. So let's get it going right here. At number 10 of Grizzly Athletics' top 10 accomplishments of the year is Grizzly women's soccer school record setting 54 goals in one season. Paced by the goal scoring abilities of Nikki Lefebvre and Mary Vernetti, the Grizzly women's soccer scored a school record 54 goals in 18 matches in 2014, accounting for the 16th best goals per game mark in the country. In all, 18 different Grizzlies found the back of the net at least once last fall, helping GGC to the third consecutive season with double-digit victories. Checking in, number 10 is Grizzly women's soccer, 54 goals scored this season. A great accomplishment there for Grizzly women's soccer, 54 goals in what, 18 games? That's, for, that's remarkable. Yeah, yeah. Now, this was one of the first things I covered right when I came in. Men's women's soccer season had just started. And um, it's not just the 54 goals scored, it's the manner in which they did it. You don't, you don't see a whole lot of teams where you're gonna look down the entire lineup and say, yeah, she's got a goal, she's got two goals, she's got eight goals, like 18 different players scoring. Yeah. They had a match where they scored 10. Right. They were just uh, filling up the net. So it's a beautiful thing. Uh, Nikki Lefebvre led the team. She's coming back as well next year. And, of course, we've got Chris Coons at the help this year, at the helm this year. Really looking forward to the lot of hard work they put in the spring, summer workouts. Looking forward to preseason camp in August. Absolutely. And Coons is, been, is a guy who's been successful everywhere he's been. He's coming off a pretty good career at Capital, and we're hoping he can bring the same kind of success here. No pressure, Coach, no pressure. But uh, we'll go. We'll move on down the line here. At number nine, this is a very special accomplishment, another first for Grizzly Athletics as the Grizzlies walk across the stage at graduation. With 10 graduates in the fall and 11 in the spring, Grizzly Athletics produced its most graduates to date in the 2014-15 academic year. The fall proved to be particularly notable as former soccer players Renee Anang, Jose Figueroa, Andres Milano, and Juan Matute joined one non-athlete as the first international graduates in George Gwinnett College histories. Standing proudly at number nine is the Grizzly graduates of 2014-15. So a great accomplishment there for Grizzly Athletics. And, I, and then Clay, to me, I know we're in year three of, of what we've done so far in athletics. It's almost like the, 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 the baby foundation. You know, you get your first walk and your first crawl and your first words. We're not going to get too many more firsts, but in year two to have those graduates, that's pretty cool with another first to add to Grizzly Athletics. Yeah, and I know a lot of people when they look out there and be like, 20 grad, 21 graduates doesn't seem like a lot, but 
you just haven't had that many people with the opportunity to graduate right. yet. So that, that's a number that we're looking forward to getting bigger and bigger. And the same goes for a lot of the Scholar Athlete Awards, like we had five this year. Um, not a whole lot of people who are juniors or right. full on right. juniors who are eligible for that award, but with over 50 people on the honor roll in both the fall and the spring, yeah. it, it looks like we're gonna have a pretty strong academic program for a long time to come. Absolutely, looking forward to it as well. And uh, it's, a, it's what we do it for. I, I know you and I talk about stats and numbers and names, but the reason these kids come to school here is part of that uh, student enhancement program that we have and obviously under the direction of Dr. Wilson. It's glad to showcase them for sure. Absolutely, absolutely. So we'll roll on through number eight now. is an impressive feat accomplished by Grizzly Tennis this past fall, highlighting their success at the ITA regions. Grizzly Tennis enjoyed yet another year to remember in the 2014-15 season as the program logged another first in the fall as Jordan Cox earned the ITA regional singles crown and the duo of Lachlan McPhee and Connor Clements picked up the doubles title to become the first ever regional champions in school history. This earned automatic berths into the small college national championships. Valaria Poda would join her fellow Grizzlies by picking up an at-large berth on the women's side. Bouncing around at number eight is history made by Grizzly Tennis at the ITA Regionals. So a big accomplishment there for Jordan Cox, a doubles duo on the men's side, and of course Valeria Poda makes the trip to the small college national championship. Clay, this is my first experience with tennis, this whole Chase Hodges experience the last two years. So when they talked about playing in the fall at the ITAs, I didn't quite understand it. Can you translate what they did for me? Yeah, we talked a little bit about this when it happened last fall. It was a pretty big deal. First ever trip to regionals and absolutely dominated when it came to regionals. Like, Jordan beat Matias for the regional title, and everybody, we had three guys in the, in the, uh, in the final four. We, I think we had five in the final eight, something like that. Yeah. And so it's, it's a real good opportunity to match yourself against the region, yeah. and then you go from the regional onto the small college championships. And now, unfortunately, we weren't able to come out of there with an NAIA title. But I think there's only eight guys that are in that small college national right. championship, right. and Jordan's one of them. I mean, he's one of the best players in the country. And Matias just missed out on it. Yeah. And he would have gotten in an at-large like Valeria got. Right. So that's the top eight in the NAIA. And then wow. if you get out of there... You go up against like the D2 schools, the D3 right. schools, JUCOs for a chance to play the the big ITA event in New York. Yeah. So it's a it's a pretty cool event, and Jordan came pretty close. Yeah. To to getting right there. And I find it I find it interesting that Chase, in the process of all year long of, of getting to May and getting to the national championship, he talked about messing with his doubles, like trying to find the right doubles lineup. So Lachlan and Connor team up to win the regional title for the first time ever. But yet, Connor and Jordan were number one in doubles in a regular season, and then Jordan and Kevin ended up playing the number one line doubles for us in May. It just shows you the depth and the talent of what that tennis program is. Yeah, and he and he had kind of been going back and forth with doubles through the fall, through the spring, and he really, he really hit those combinations exactly perfect when it got to the end of the spring. Well, speaking of Grizzly tennis, they highlight number seven again here, and not only just tennis, but uh, five of our six programs highlighted here at number seven. It's our growing list of Grizzly All-Americans. An impressive 13 athletes across five of GGC's six sports picked up NAI All-American honors this season. Led by a group of six first-teamers, including NAI National Player of the Year, Ty Abbott from the Grizzly baseball team. Meanwhile, Grizzly softball player Casty Littlefield joined Matias Atim and Valeria Poda as the first athletes in school history to pick up back-to-back -back first team honors. Of the last two seasons, the Grizzlies have earned a total of 31 national recognitions. At number seven, it's 13 Grizzly All-Americans. So this is that, that just, you just shake your head and shrug your shoulders like, are you kidding me? 13 All-Americans in just the second year being in the NAI. That is insane. Yeah, yeah. There's there's athletic departments, I'm not going to call anybody out here, that don't have 13 All-Americans in their history and they've had a college for 100 years. Well, it's not just the 13 this year. I mean, 31, 31. over the first two years. And and not just like, you know, run-of-the-mill All-Americans. You're talking <laughs> National Player of the Year, three people going back-to-back -back first team. and. And it's not the same people. Like, there are different people who are All-Americans yeah. this year than were last year. So it, it really shows the depth of all the programs over the past two years that you have these different honorees popping up every year. 
it's another head shaking moment where I just yeah. go, is this really happening here right now? It's, it's phenomenal. It's absolutely unbelievable. Another phenomenal accomplishment is number six, and it's our Grizzly softball team winning the AII championship. Here it is. Last season left the Grizzly softball team hungry for more, and they unquestionably delivered in 2015 as the team lifted its first ever AII championship in May to advance to their first ever NAI tournament. The championship weekend in Lawrenceville was one to remember as the Grizzlies edged out three tight games to advance to the championship showdown. Clutch hitting and dominating pitching made the recipe for success as Mary Burke earned most outstanding player of the tournament and Caleb Byram shut the door on Ashford with a two-hit shutout in the title bout as GGC finished the year with a 26-2 record at the Grizzly Softball Complex. Engraving their names at number six is Grizzly Softball's AI Championship. So Clay, I, I don't know about you, but just watching that video there, I, I remembered how much, how little I breathed that weekend and like how tense everything was until it was finally all over. What a remarkable weekend for Cat Islandberg. Absolutely. You know, you're sitting there for the every home game and you know, you start off with 22 straight home wins and you're almost waiting for the other shoe yeah. to drop. You're just like sitting there, like conference tournament, okay. And then just, they came up every single time. That that first Ashford game was one of the craziest games yeah. in any sport I've ever seen. Yeah. I mean, you got Cassidy getting on there late, but working out of so many jams, just, I don't know what you were thinking over there. You had to come up with material and you were yeah. running out of stuff. Well, I, I, I tell you what was great was so much happened in three days for that softball program to take a step in the right direction. Because I think in year two, it was the most important for softball to take a step up. Chase wins another national championship, I get it. Baseball, another 50-win season. You know, you don't want to take a step back, but to take that championship step level, softball needed to do it this year. So I don't know if there was internal pressure or what, but Coach Eilenberg motivated those troops, and they got ready to play those three days. because. Kentucky Christian was really good and whatever the six seed, whatever they were, five seed, they were really good. A nail biter that went into extras with Ashford. And you think one base hit doesn't go your way or one ball four doesn't go your way. And we don't get to sit here and tell that story and they're not at number six. Well, you know, it's, it's kind of funny. I've been in, this is my 10th year in college athletics and I've seen so many like season catchphrases like completely not work out. Yeah. Completely. And you're sitting there talking, you need one this, one that. The whole catchphrase for the season was one more, and the other one was defend the fortress, and they did both. Both of them came <laughs> to Patrician this year. It was just a remarkable. And again, I want to appreciate what we did this year, but you can't help with all of our success go, with all our success go, what's next? You know, they got to that national champ, that national tournament. They experienced that, and it's almost like that old act like you've been there before. Well, we've never been there before. And so for the program to go to that step, that next level, you only wonder what's coming next. And I mean, now the national tournament, we picked up our first postseason when we went, uh, we ended up losing to Davenport twice. But I think it's important to look at those games individually. We played pretty well. Yep. Some, we played some real nail biters in the national tournament yep. over at Auburn Montgomery and certainly didn't look like a first year team playing over there. Absolutely. So that is six through 10 on our top 10 accomplishments for the 2014 15 season. We'll have the top five next on the other side of this break. And during a commercial break, scratch your head a little bit and figure out if you can figure out what one through five is. We'll be back here to Grizzlies Live at Nuke Scenery on the Grizzly Digital Network. The Georgia Gwinnett Grizzlies compete in the heart of Gwinnett County in Metro Atlanta. The Grizzlies currently field six teams and compete at the state-of-the-art Grizzly Athletics Complex. Georgia Gwinnett College is transforming higher education and celebrating 10 years since its charter class in 2005. As you plan your next trip to see the Grizzlies, log on to grizzlyathletics.com and select the visitor's guide. From driving directions to local points of interest and a listing of our proud sponsors, log on to grizzlyathletics.com. Hi, I'm Sean Gillespie, coordinator of student athlete enhancement for Grizzly Athletics. At Georgia Gwinnett College, we uphold the NAI's champions of character values of integrity, respect, responsibility, sportsmanship, and servant leadership. It's our mission to develop lifelong leaders of character through academic and athletic excellence, producing standout citizens for our community. We want our friends, family, and community to be proud to cheer on the Grizzlies every single day. 
Character-driven intercollegiate athletics are what we're all about. Go Grizzlies! Hi Grizzly fans, this is Ned Colgrove, Assistant Athletics Director for External Operations. If you're looking to align your business with our Championship Athletics Program, take a look at our excellent corporate sponsorship packages. From signage around our beautiful facility to in-game and digital placement, your tax-deductible support of our program will help offer a championship experience for every student athlete. Plus, connect your brand to our growing fan base. You can find out more by checking out the corporate sponsorship brochure on grizzlyathletics.com or calling me directly at 678-407-5241. Go Grizzlies! Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, here to Grizzlies Live at Nuke City. I'm Matt Mahoney, joined by Clay Trainers. We count down the top 10 accomplishments for Grizzly Athletics this 2014-15 season. We'll get to the top five right now. At number five is uh, Grizzly Men's Soccer AII Championship as they go back to back in the first two years. Grizzly Men's Soccer continued to be the class of the AII in 2014 as the program became the first in school history to hoist back to back conference titles with a memorable pair of days in the frigid temperatures of Clinton, Iowa. After a last minute strike from Ibrahima Sissoko in the semifinals versus Cal State San Marcos, most outstanding player Lewis Sharp led the Grizzlies to a gritty, snowy, 2-1 victory over Houston Victoria to clinch a berth in the NAI tournament for the second consecutive season. A snowy celebration for Grizzly men's soccer. The AI championship is number five on our countdown. So as tense as I was watching the softball video package there, I was just as cold watching the men's soccer package there. Is that the coldest you've ever been in your life? I was honestly about to say, like, my feet are now, like, freezing oh. just looking at that. Um, I don't think it was the coldest I've been in my life, but for an extended amount of time, absolutely. I'm sitting there trying to take pictures and taking breaks to, so I can feel my fingers again so I can snap more photos. It was... Uh, it was not your everyday soccer championship. And I think it only made the accomplishment that much more remarkable. You know, the fact that it was back to back, the fact that they had to fly to Clinton, Iowa, play at Ashford, snowy conditions, deal with football lines on the soccer field. And when they don't have a football team. And they don't have a football team. But, uh, but I think what was great was Coach Deku's ability to tell the team to block all that out stay in this locker room right here. These 11 guys, or 22 guys on this team, and, and again, they, had, they were determined to get back to that NAI National Tournament, and they didn't care what was in their way, whether it was Cal State San Marcos, Houston Victoria, snow, the sleet, whatever, they had a job to do. And I, and I, and I enjoy going on those road trips because you get that inside look of, this team is locked in and they don't care about anything else. Well, I enjoyed everything but that drive from the Chicago airport to to Iowa, but um, yeah, it was a it was a good thing to watch. I mean, you don't see a you got a lot of warm weather teams playing down there. Pretty much all of them yeah. dealt well with the conditions, but we were able to make those plays, and Lewis Sharp was just fantastic in goal. And the same thing. It's so funny that you look at you compare it to softball, men's soccer. There's so many things that could have went wrong for us, and we don't talk about this at number five. I mean, we were 30 seconds away from PKs in the semifinals against San Marcos. And there's, I don't want to say bad blood because we've only seen them twice, but there's, a, there's, there's some headbutting there in, in that semifinals. And PKs, you know, being a soccer, that's the worst way to determine a winner in tournament play. And we were 30 seconds away from maybe not even telling the story. Yeah, I mean, you can just look at Ashford. Ashford comes in very highly ranked, playing at home has to play to penalties with uh, Houston Victoria and, and loses. Yep. So you don't really want to give it up to those kind of odds. And, you know, Ibra makes that wow. makes that goal there late. You know, everybody goes crazy. Then they have to come back the next day and battle snow. Yeah. And um, I don't know if there were colder conditions, but with the snow, it probably felt like it was. Yeah, absolutely. And it was just, it was a really good thing to remember and hopefully never have to go through again. And, and I love the guys that stepped up in that championship game were the guys that had previous experience from the last tournament. Sharpie was fantastic. German Rodriguez controlled the midfield. He had a great goal there against Houston Vic. Martin Lugo had some minutes off the bench that were really quality. And of course you had, uh, you know, the, the defense was just phenomenal as it's always been all year long with the changes they had in the back. 
but it just it just again came together really well that weekend. Absolutely, have Callum running all over the Callum field. Callum was fantastic. The the best thing about that was all the English guys. They were refusing to wear. Well, most of them yeah, were refusing yeah. to wear the sleeves and yeah. tights because they were afraid what their parents would say if they would see it on TV. That they'd deal with the weather. So you see Sharpie wearing the shorts, and he's not getting the run out that everybody else yep. is getting. He's staying pretty yep. pretty back there. He's like, I can't. I have to wear the shorts. <laughs> I have to. I'm gonna get made fun of if I don't. Yep. So uh, history checks in at number five with the back-to-back -back AI Men's Soccer Championships, and history also checks in at number four. And this one's a little unique, so stay with us here. Grizzly Athletics this season had signature wins over some of the best teams in the country. Take a look. The success was rampant around Grizzly Athletics this season, and that's probably no more apparent than looking at the big wins for each program this year. Five of GGC's six varsity sports earned at least one win over a top three opponent this season. Men's soccer started the trend with a win over number two and national runner-up Auburn Montgomery in the fall. Softball kept it going with a pair of season opening routes over number three Reinhardt. Women's tennis also notched a number three win, beating Bernal to close out the regular season. But perhaps the most notable, baseball's extra inning victory over top ranked Faulkner and men's tennis nail-biter against Division II defending national champion and second-ranked West Florida. The nation's best getting beat by the Grizzlies ranks number four on the top accomplishments of the 2014-15 season. So five of our six sports beat top three teams in the country. So it's not like we're getting, we're winning these championships and just cruising. We're playing some high-level teams, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with them and coming out on top. I, I don't know if we'll ever get to that, have that accomplishment ever again, just because it's a little luck involved and the timing's got to be right, but unbelievable wins this year for our program. So many things have to go right. I mean, that AUM one was the, like my first, probably my second week here, first or second week here was one of the first games I did. And, you know, they got a lot of pressure on us and we just answered back, get that win, thanks to the Morty and then, uh, he carried that right over into the spring, and it was just like the softball, you know, the opening up with a number three team in the country, you don't know what to expect, and then just run rolling them yeah, real quick. Twice. Getting out, yeah, <laughs> getting out real quick, and you're just like, oh, this could be a pretty good season for yeah. softball. That's what the antennas went up for me, too, after the Reinhardt. That I went, you know, Reinhardt said, you know, they had to replace some tools, not to take anything away, but I was like, this team may have something special in them this year. And then women's tennis rolled through their slate in the regular season. And insane. number three, Bernal, comes here and gets smoked. 8-1, if I'm not mistaken. 6-3. No, 8-1 was number six, Scad. That's right. So, I mean, still 6-3 to number three in the country. It was, just, it was just remarkable. The crazy thing with both of the tennises is, is that you could sit there and look at their schedule. Yeah. And for the men, they didn't just beat a top three opponent. They beat a lot of like top 10 opponents and the same goes for across the women. different divisions yeah oh well, yeah yeah <laughs> I mean, absolutely and then um obviously with baseball i'm not sure about you but that faulkner game was probably the most fun i had in a home game the yeah. whole year the crowds into it yeah you got uh players moms dancing to turn down for what yeah it was a uh it was certainly an interesting evening and it going to extras great for sure and obviously probably motivated that group to, to make that run in the postseason to host there at home in Lawrenceville. So uh, just, just a phenomenal accomplishment there. At number four was the five or six programs beating top three opponents uh, on the year. So what is number three? Also has to do with rankings, but it's new program highs for those sports and where they climb in the coaches poll. Here's a look. The Grizzlies did more than just log big wins in the 2014-15 season as five of the six programs ended the season ranked among the nation's top 25. But it was the last week of April that served as one of the most memorable as three of the GGC's six sports held number one rankings at the exact same time. Men's tennis, women's tennis, and baseball who received their first ever number one rankings. Men's soccer picked up program best ranking topping out at number seven. Meanwhile, softball also added to the program high of number 21. As we climb up our top 10 accomplishments to number three, it's the Grizzlies climbing the coaches pole to new heights. So I love this accomplishment because not only does it show our teams getting better, 
but it shows the growth of the programs, that they're getting more national recognition. And the fact that half of our sports were ranked number one in the same week, as I know I've said this already, is insane. It's ridiculous. Yeah, that was a, that was a pretty cool day. We knew that we were kind of close. We had an sh outside shot of being number one. We were number two. Um, we had lost one of the games over the weekend, but we won a couple too. So I was just kind of sitting around. We had a game that day. It was senior day. Yeah. And I was just waiting to see what the ranking was. I wasn't really sure it would be. And it pops up at number one, and I was like, this is this is a pretty cool moment. I went and told Brad, and Brad was like, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So it was uh, in tennis, obviously. I mean, the, the men were number one from the end of last season to the end of this season. Yeah. The women were number one, you know, up right until the end. And then, you know, men's soccer spent most of its season in the top ten. And obviously softball, thanks to that big tournament win that we were talking about earlier, moves into the top 25. It was a pretty yeah. good year all around. I think what's interesting is you're going to see the transformation of these programs to go from the underdog that nobody knows to now the target's going to be on your back. It's going to be a different environment, a different atmosphere in year four, five, and six moving forward here. And of course, as we continue to win championships here uh, in the athletic department. You can, you can already see it in tennis. Absolutely. So already first see it. First-hand account in Mobile. I mean, they are, the teams come out like, and you know, I'm not sure how many people have seen tennis matches, but they, it's kind of a build in enthusiasm. Yeah. You don't normally see it from the very first point. Right. And the teams we were playing yeah. are into it from the start. And uh, it, it's, it's nice for them to be that into it and lose. Yeah, absolutely. Well, speaking of tennis and Mobile, here's number two. Grizzly women's tennis here checking in at number two on the season. The effort to repeat as national champions came up just short for the Grizzly women's tennis team, but it was once again an impressive campaign for the Green and Gray as they did not drop a match to an NAI opponent until the 5-4 heartbreaker to AUM in a national championship match. Led by the fantastic play of Valaria Poda, who ended the season as the first ever Grizzly to achieve a national number one singles ranking. The Grizzlies finished the year ranked second in the country at number two. It's another great season for Grizzly women's tennis. I would have to say, this is 100% my opinion, I think what the women's tennis team did this year was harder than what they had to do last year in winning the national championship. The adversity they faced all season long, they knew the odds were going to be stacked against them the whole national championship tournament. Then when they got to the championship match, got down 2-1 to doubles, I mean, they just scratched and clawed, got it back to 4-4, and it all came down to one court. But by no means did our season come down to one point. I, I think what they did this year was well more than just a feather in the cap. They were phenomenal this year. Absolutely. Like, the national tournament, you know, you don't kind of get a sense from looking at tennis scores how things go. You know, this court ends, then this court ends. So you're all on different, like, staggered timelines. Right. And... There's no real other way to describe it other than scrappy. Like, they went down 2-1 in three of the four matches. They were yep. able to come back and win in two of those, obviously, and came pretty close in the third. I mean, it doesn't get much closer than that championship match. The only thing I can try to compare it to to, to translate it is it's, it was game seven of the NBA Finals. We went to overtime and basically lost on, like, a three-pointer with ten seconds left. Yeah. There was a little bit of time afterwards that we could have come back for a bastard against the wall, and we had just it was spent so much energy to get to that moment that we just came up a little bit short. Yeah, and I mean, you you start and look back at individuals during that tournament, like <laughs> Kiara goes four and zero, Helga goes four and zero in singles, um, and then Valeria, you know, she she didn't get a win in every match because matches ended early, right? Um, but she goes and knocks off. Number one, Nora Abbas. That's how she became the number one player in the country. Yeah. And Abbas had never lost on the court to an NAI opponent. Her only loss, she had to retire due to injury. Yeah. So that is like that's more than a feather in the cap. That's yeah. that's pretty good. I know the trophy is a little bit smaller and doesn't exactly say the same exact thing as national runner-up, but display that one proudly, Grizzly Athletics and Grizzly Women's Tennis. And I'll say this. That whole team is scheduled to come back, and that's the worst thing you want as an opponent, a team that's talented and hungry. It's going to be dangerous next year. whole team's coming back, and a whole team with more than one national championship experience. 
It, it's your. There's not a whole lot of teams that they're going to play who have seen, in some cases, eight matches in the national tournament. Absolutely. So it's a. It's something to look forward to. Yeah. Don't, again, don't want to don't want to wash away these accomplishments just yet, but be on the lookout for sure. So let's get to it. Finally, our top accomplishment for Grizzly Athletics in the 2014-15 season. Men's tennis, national championship, back to back. Let's take a look. Dominance. That's really the only adjective one could use to describe the Grizzly men's tennis team at the NAI National Tournament as they lifted a second straight national championship. The team won all four matches at the event by a 5-0 line score with each of the first two matches finishing up in less than two hours. In fact, the Grizzlies didn't drop a point to an NAI opponent over the course of the entire season. As Chase Hodges once again earned National Coach of the Year and the team finished with five players ranked in the nation's top 50, a feat that no other school can claim regardless of division. The top accomplishment belongs to the top team of Grizzly Athletics, the 2015 NAI National Champion, Grizzly Men's Tennis. So a phenomenal accomplishment for Chase Hodges, now four-time National Coach of the Year, three-time National Champion. Men's Tennis goes back to back, two national championships in two years. Dominance, unbelievable, insane, phenomenal. It's crazy, Clay. I mean, I'm not sure you could rank any of those matches in their five or six tough matches of the year, and they're playing at the national championships. Yeah. I mean, it's it, it was crazy to watch. I mean, those first two days, uh, I had missed the first day because I was with softball, but I was hoping I'd come in and catch the tail part of doubles I'm, or tail part of singles, and I'm about a half hour outside of Mobile. He texted me, he's like, oh, we're done here. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, all right, well, I guess I'll catch the women's match. And, and it was just phenomenal. We, we, we could probably talk about this for, for another 30 minutes, but it was over after doubles. I mean, I, I had never been to a, a game or even a national championship where you're halfway through the game and it's like, go home, folks. It's over. Show's over. We'll take the trophy. We'll take the banner. It is a wrap. Y'all head to the house. It was nice knowing you. Yeah, and that's the, the difference when it comes to NAI where doubles counts as three points. It, do, it doesn't work that way in Division One, And you, you rarely see a team that gets that down when you take a 3-0 lead in doubles. I mean, Emory Riddle, they are melted. Absolutely. Like, they're, you would go out and get that 3-0 lead in doubles, and a lot of teams are just like, okay, well, it's a good run. <laughs> like, I mean, it sounds a little cheap, but that's, that's how it played out. It was almost hard to watch. It was, it was remarkable, and it was phenomenal. It was a great moment there, and, and I, don't, I don't know officially when it was actually said, but I got a text message on Sunday on our way back to Lawrenceville, and Chase says, I'm ready for three Pete. And I'm just like, dude, enjoy this one for like a day. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I think I talked to him about that before we left the courts. I'm so, uh, yeah, everybody's coming back. I mean, this is obviously, <laughs> this is obviously a lot to put on a team, so you don't really want to do that because, I mean, they've already won back to back the first two years, but they're, they're pretty well oiled machine. And, yeah. Uh, nobody's graduating. Everybody's back next year. Should be should be a fun time. So it is a great time for Grizzly Athletics and our top ten accomplishments of the year there. Clay, appreciate you coming by, man. We'll do this again next year. You're more than welcome. That sounds good. That sounds good. What uh, you got? Any plans for the summer here? We got the media guys to work on. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, lots of media guys. You're gonna work update on. all this stuff, right? Yeah, I gotta <laughs> update it all and then. Um, you know, try and help out around some of the area sports teams, right. and that's pretty much it. Do I get shout outs? I was waiting for it. I was hoping I would avoid it. Go ahead. Well, you know, I'm not sure if you've noticed, I've got a list of people to repay who have shouted me out over the course this year. So let's. <laughs> Matias, he got me twice. Okay. Uh, Connor Clements, Jordan oh Cox. Oh, my God. Ty Abbott, Alex Roberts, Arsenio Watlington, obviously coaches. Uh, Brad and Chase, not Christian Turnipseed, <laughs> definitely not him. Okay, no shout out for Christian Turnipseed. And do you want to keep going? Keep going. Um, you? Thanks, appreciate it, Clay. <laughs> Colin, Colin, Marissa, obviously the whole GDN crew. For the sake of time, we gotta go. All right, that's fair. Clay, good job, buddy, appreciate it. We'll oh. take a break, we'll come back. Keep it locked, we got an MLB draft going on right now we do I, I have that in my announcements on, on the on the on the wrap up there hey, so i'm just making sure we get taking business taken care See, of See, that's why we keep him around because half the stuff that i say i don't even think of it comes from his desk and so i, I sound smart because of you clay i appreciate that 
So we are going to take a break. We'll come back and put a nice little bow on this show. You're watching Grizzlies Live at Nuke Cedary on the Grizzly Digital Network. It's time to gear up, Grizzly fans. Right now, you can find all the latest Grizzly gear to support your team by visiting the Georgia Gwinnett College official bookstore inside the Student Center. Or simply shop online anytime, anywhere by visiting ggc.bncollege.com. From hats and t-shirts to jackets and one-of-a-kind collectibles, you can find it all with the official GGC bookstore. Plus, on game day, be sure to swing by the merchandise table at the stadium. So pick up your favorite item today and show your Grizzly spirit. Go Grizzlies! Hello, I'm James Williams, head athletic trainer for the Georgia Gwinnett Grizzlies. Thanks to our friends at Gwinnett Medical Center, your Grizzlies receive first-class quality health care right here in Gwinnett County. With daily hands-on recovery and state-of-the-art training facilities, the Grizzlies spend more time on the field than they do on the bench. So get in the game, Grizzlies, with Gwinnett Medical Center in Duluth and in Lawrenceville. Do you have what it takes to compete for the Georgia Gwinnett Grizzlies? Hi, this is Dr. Ian Potter, Assistant Athletics Director for Compliance and Academic Services. If you are interested in becoming a Grizzly through character-driven intercollegiate athletics, visit grizzlyathletics.com and then look under the Student Athletes section. We offer opportunities to students both near and far to pursue academic and athletic excellence here at Dynamic Georgia Gwinnett College. Find out more today about wearing the green and gray at grizzlyathletics.com. Go Grizzlies! Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, here to Grizzlies Live at Nuke Cedary. Big thanks to Greg and Bill who have hosted us all year long, all spring season. We'll have an episode today and an episode in July as well. So big thanks for them and the, the entire uh, staff here at Nukes that have allowed us to have this show, and we continue to look forward to that relationship. Uh, quick tweet here coming from uh, the man in charge there, Dr. Darren Wilson. As a three national championship, we'll get you a new, new tennis facility. As uh, Dr. Wilson actually took a video of the new construction project going on at the GDC tennis facility. I don't think we can play that, but you should definitely get on Twitter. Follow Dr. Wilson. He's a good follow on Twitter. And uh, check that out. We'll keep you posted on that throughout the summer. We'll have a um, cumulative video summary of that whole construction project with Dr. Wilson by the conclusion of it as well. Fans, you can always tweet us. Use the hashtag Grizzly Athletics as well as the other ones you saw on your screen there. Um, Clay mentioned it. Quick shout out from me to the Grizzly baseball team. Today is day three of the Major League Baseball draft. And if you know, last summer we had three Grizzlies, Tyler Carpenter, Zeke McGranahan, and John Finanza, who were drafted this day last summer. So I know a lot of Grizzlies, or a couple of Grizzlies, I should say, are uh, on their screens, watching their phones, watching their computers, hoping their name pops up and they get a chance to fulfill a childhood dream to play professional baseball. So good luck to those Grizzlies today and uh, potentially day three of the MLB draft. Uh, what else we got here? Another announcement. Fans, I have felt selfish two years of hosting this show and uh, to sit down with these great coaches and great student athletes and interview them. Well, now I finally decided here that we're going to open it up to you, the fans. So we want to get your interaction, we want to get your involvement, get on your social media, send us a question to a coach or a staff member. I'll even open it up for the crew here. You got a question for me? You want to see some behind the scenes look at how we operate on the Grizzly Digital Network? Get on the social media accounts there. Hit us up on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. Send us a video on Instagram and uh, use the hashtag there or send it directly to Grizzly Athletics. And we will feature, if we pick your question, you will be featured on the July 22nd episode of uh, Grizzlies Live. And we'll also get your question answered for you, too. More information, more details will follow on grizzlyathletics.com. But for the time being, start shooting us those Facebook posts, those, uh, those Twitter tweets. Is that how they work? Twitter tweets and Instagram videos. Everybody's laughing at me because I don't know how that stuff works. But you guys do. So send that stuff to us, and we will get your question answered for you right here on Grizzlies Live on the July 22nd episode. Uh, also fans, um, we're gonna spoil you a little bit more here. We've got another great treat coming your way on Monday, a brand new feature stories on the Grizzly Digital Network called the Core Value Series. It's a five part series that's gonna take place over the summer telling the unique stories of our student athletes. It's like nothing else you've ever seen here before on the Grizzly Digital Network. The Core Value Series starts next Monday, and as we wrap up this show, we'll give you a sneak preview of what you're gonna see on Monday. So be sure to tune back in uh, to our website about 12 o'clock on Monday, June 15th, and we'll have uh, feature story number one of our five-part five summer series on the Core Value Series. 
Big thanks again to Clay Trainum here as uh, co-hosting today for our entire cast and crew from Lawrenceville, Georgia. I'm Matt Mahoney signing off. Enjoy your summer. So long, everybody. Take a peek. Enjoy this. First question, who is more competitive? <laughs> what? <laughs> no, this was hard. Like, when we're both younger, we always win at each other. I don't know. It's me. <laughs> Luke and Amy Moreland grew up in Queensland, Australia, about an hour outside of Brisbane. Each had their own unique journey to the United States. For Luke, it began at an early age. I picked tennis up probably when I was four or five. I play, always played other sports as well, and then when I was probably eight or nine, tennis, and it was tennis and soccer became like the main thing, and, and then I eventually chose tennis, but yeah, tennis has always been a massive, massive part of my life. Luke's journey to where he is today had an impact on his family for sure, but words cannot describe how influential it was to his younger sister, Amy Moreland. I've played tennis and soccer like my whole life. I sort of followed, followed my brother, so whatever he did, I sort of did because I wanted to be just like him. So if he had soccer practice, I'd play soccer, and then if he had tennis practice, I'd play tennis. We'd like to thank our corporate sponsors for making today's broadcast possible. You can watch archived broadcasts and feature stories in the On Demand tab of the Grizzly Digital Network. For the most recent information, log on to grizzlyathletics.com.